am here at the Tomac Hall Preserve in the Columbia River Gorge. Um, I was thinking at some point this morning that this would have been a great place for sunrise. Not too sure there was much of a sunrise. We had a storm come through last night and there's still a huge buildup of clouds over east of us. So not too sure how pretty the sunrise would have been. It probably could have been really nice. But um, as you can see around me is nothing but blue skies and brown hills. And in April, this place is filled with beautiful, beautiful, let's take a look at them. <laughs> I don't know if you saw those. <laughs> uh, balsam root, lupin, beautiful, beautiful flowers. And it's also filled with a lot of photographers. But I'm here in August when everything is brown. On vacation this week and I decided to make a lot of little videos um, hopefully I can oh that's really cool um, about some of the lessons I learned when I was in photo school way back when when it was film and digital was still a pipe dream although digital cameras did exist uh, just they weren't really that popular yet or that affordable or that good so I was in school doing film and the first year uh, of film, we learned all about black and white and it was all about, okay, let's you know, learn about composition. Let's learn about exposure. Let's learn how to pr process with chemicals our film and then learn how to print things properly. All learning the, the basic techniques of photography. The second year we got to learn about color all about color theory, you know, color contrast, color analogies, monochrome color, all that fun stuff. And one of the first things our professor told us when we got into color was he wanted nothing, wanted to see no, absolutely no sunrises and sunsets. He was tired of them and he considered them lazy photography, especially lazy color photography. We all groaned. But really, what he was trying to get us to do is not fall back on the simple things. Uh, sure, color is great. And, you know, you get a pretty picture of a sunset and everybody oohs and ahs. What he wanted us to work on was the things he wanted us to build on what we had learned that first year. Our composition, exposure, creativity, figuring out new ways to photograph images. While I'm here at the Cotton McCall Preserve, I thought it would be a great chance to talk about monochrome color in color photography. It doesn't have to be black and white. It can be a singular color and it's a color range, color tone of those tones of that color. So I'm looking at these yellowed fields. Everything around it is kind of a brown yellow. There's a few kind of odd greens and uh, some whites in it and you may think it's boring, but if you get into the details of these dead flowers, oh, there's one right there. Um, you can find something really, really interesting to photograph. Looking at photographing monochrome color, you look again, just looking at the details, the shapes, the light contrast that bring out what makes the subject interesting. So what I have here, I will show you here in a second, is a very interesting uh, end of a flower. It's basically the stem and what is remaining. And it's a, it's a carrot, it's a, in the carrot family, it's a lomatium. And all it has left is just this curving stem and the, the structure at the top. And I find it very interesting. And it's the light that helps bring out that the shape of the image of the subject. And then also is a darker orange than the rest of the background. So here, let's show it. It's a lovely little plant that, um, yeah, I think it really helps highlight what you can do with monochrome images. I'm going to take a few more around here and I might show them at the end, but that really helps highlight because it has a lot of light 
to and dark to shadow to help highlight that curving stem and then it also is a darker orange so it also pops it out from the lighter yellows behind it and it's still in that yellow color range as a monochrome image kind of moving around the the little lomatium there a little dried out lomatium and I realized that the flower right next to it, the same type of flower next to it, had a stem that kind of curved the other way. And so, yeah, I had to photograph that too. Again, you know, the light and the dark helped highlight the shape of the plant and the shape of the image itself. And i uh, really kind of happy with this one too. some root and some other dried flowers around it. It really is this really cool effect. And um, yeah, let's get a photo of this. Now again, we have some different colors of yellow and some different textures to help pop it out. So let's, let's get a photo. Oh, pop this one out and make the subject really stand out. Now, I was looking at the textures. So one of the things you do to get get textures stand out is I was on a smaller aperture or actually larger aperture smaller number so about a uh, eight or six point seven I believe and so the subject is nice and in focus and you get all that wonderful texture within the subject but then the background is completely soft and ethereal so it really helps to pop out that subject. And then also there's a couple of those little other dried out buds that are in focus, a few that are a softer focus, and then the rest that are blurred out in the background. And I think that turns out to be a really nice image. So a monochrome because everything in that is a tone of yellow. I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to focus. I think I'm going to make more of a pano and try and get the the thicker heads of, I think it's Queen Anne's Lace dried out. Uh, try and get them in a nice line and then kind of blur out the background. It's just, again, I'm using the light to help bring out that the subject uh, away from the, the grasses in the background because the tones are almost exactly as the background is. So we're gonna use the light to try and get those to come out. And wow, as I was looking through the viewfinder, it really came out kind of painterly. So really excited to get that into the photo processing, my Photoshop, and process it and see how it really turns out. Cause that was, that ended up really looking great through the viewfinder and I'm really excited about it. I hope you like it too. short examples. I hope you realize that even on a bright sunny day or just on a really nasty day you get somewhere where it's just not that fun. If you look for monochrome compositions where all the colors are basically you know just right next to each other on the time on the color wheel you know blues or greens or your uh, reds, your yellows, like we have here, this beautiful, beautiful yellow. And uh, look for different ways to compose these, the light, use textures, use the differences in the colors to help make your subject stand out. And I'm sure you will come away with some beautiful, beautiful photos yourself. And I am on my way to the ocean after this, and we'll continue these little snippets for you. And I hope you would enjoy them. If you want to follow along, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, hit the like button if you, <laughs> you know, the thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And you know, there's a little bell where you can find out if I have a new video out. And um, I really in appreciate your coming along. And I really appreciate um, all my followers. You, you make everything worthwhile, you really do. And <laughs> I was just going to say, I'm coming into my 61st year. I just turned 60. And 
really enjoying life right now, being able to photograph, being able to go out on adventures and share them with you. So I will see you on the next adventure. Bye-bye.